Set the stage here, the big picture. What do these numbers tell us? Well, that, that streaming TV continues to gain share from broadcasting and cable. I mean, Nielsen rolled out this metric, the gauge, a couple of years ago. It was one of the first of these third-party metrics that Netflix actually endorsed. It had been very skeptical of sort of the Nielsen weekly ratings. And there was a period of about a year ago, I want to say, where streaming share seemed to flatline. And you had a lot of traditional media people saying, oh, has st streaming hit its peak? Uh, and that clearly hasn't happened. Uh, the one thing I would note is that if you put cable and broadcast together, pay TV still accounts for more TV viewing than streaming. But streaming's gaining share and is, is only going to continue to do so. Kevin, what's your take? Um, you know, just a couple of months ago, we were talking about Netflix losing subscribers. And here we are with these big numbers. How do you square that? Yeah, I, th I think it just speaks to the amazing amount of content that's available across the other services that aren't Netflix, um, Paramount Plus, uh, Hulu, Apple TV Plus have all really pushed their original strategy uh, really far ahead, especially after the initial COVID outbreak. And like Lucas just mentioned, um, this streaming gauge that Nielsen has rolled out has been really helpful because the streaming companies themselves don't uh, report a, a metric uniformly that can be allow others to measure uh, you know, usage or, or reach among them uh, across each other. So uh, it's a big moment uh, for for streaming to overtake traditional. Uh, I would con expect it continue to happen, maybe not every month, uh, continuously as uh, major sports seasons start like the NBA. But I don't think this will be the first time we see uh, streaming overtake traditional TV. What do you think the difference is, Kevin, between Netflix and Disney Plus? You know. We've been concerned about Netflix losing subscriber, subscribers, but Disney, according to its latest earnings report, gaining subscribers. Yeah, I think the main difference is uh, Disney's historic vault of IP, which families and uh, really consumers globally can can identify with and, um, you know, really go back to growing up with those types of franchises. And Netflix has been pushing forward with its uh, initiative to build out more franchises for for uh, titles like Stranger Things and um, other big uh, originals that it, it's rolled out. So it, it's trying to push the envelope in, in terms of franchising titles as well so that streamers or consumers have a better idea of what they're signing up for with the original strategy of Netflix, um, which I think a lot of people have more of an idea of what Disney Plus will offer with their originals. Now, there was a question when Disney launched Disney Plus about whether it would be too kid focused i i was recently speaking with ross gerber longtime investor in disney take a listen to what he had to say about that parents like me absolutely trust disney content with my kids and you know just recently i took youtube away from them because youtube shorts has become the garbage hole of hell and i don't want my kids watching garbage hole content and if i put them on disney plus there's nothing they can watch that's bad so i think parents really trust the brand and 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 that's starting to really pay off for them lucas do you agree with what he said about youtube and also can disney really win over adults there's no question that that parents trust disney i think that ross is in the minority in terms of parent behavior you look at the most popular channels on youtube in, in any given week and almost all of them are kids channels it's it's become a default babysitter for, for so many different families um, that there's not really a comparison. The other thing to keep in mind with Disney is Disney didn't grow in the US. So it's not like there are a bunch of parents who are signing up for Disney here. It's really overseas where Disney's been quite strong. Um, and, and that challenge that you outlined at the top is still one for Disney, which is that it's really good with parents. It's really good with fanboys people and fangirls, people who love Star Wars, Marvel, and the like. But it has to try to broaden its appeal to a, a wider group of people. It's something that's, that they're working on. Uh, that's why they've started adding R-rated movies. It's why you're going to see more different types of programming on Disney+, Plus because they need that to keep growing to, to keep Wall Street excited about the company. Meantime, Lucas, Walmart also getting into streaming, teaming up with Paramount. Of course, Amazon has Amazon Prime Video. What exactly are Walmart customers going to get um, from this tie-up? And is it, is it smart? 
Well, if you are a, a customer of Walmart Plus, which is, if we want to you know, make things simple, sort of like Walmart's equivalent of Amazon Prime, you will have access to yeah. Paramount Plus, which is Paramount streaming service. Uh, and that's, you know, they're trying to, Walmart experimented with making its own video service, Voodoo. It didn't work very well. They're leaning on a, you know, a trusted and growing brand in Paramount Plus. It has the potential to be mutually beneficial, but it works if for Paramount, if Walmart signs up a bunch of people for Walmart Plus, uh, and it, it works for Walmart if the Paramount is, you know, enticing enough to get pe more people to sign up for its service. It's pretty early. Walmart Plus is very small compared to something like Amazon Prime. Meantime, some big news in sports entertainment. You've got Paramount renewing the rights to the Champion League fo football matches. You've also got Fox, NBC, CBS teaming up for the Big Ten. I wonder, Kevin, is sports really the next and only way for these streamers to get to the next level, a whole new level, not an incremental level? Yeah, I think so. And and not just sports, but, but news as well. So, you know, a lot of these... Newer streamers uh, with the wave that started in late 2019 launching, um, they came out of the gate strong with originals like uh, The Mandalorian from, from Disney Plus, The Morning Show from Apple TV Plus. But one of the big things that consumers still can't really do uh, with access to these major services like Netflix, Paramount Plus, and Apple TV Plus is access a significant amount of live broadcast from the major sports leagues like the NFL or um, NBA. So. It's not surprising that we're seeing these big packages uh, increasingly being signed, uh, you know, by these companies. And I think we're at a point where consumers already have access to so many on-demand scripted and unscripted content uh, choices that right now it's it's really up to the streamers to, to differentiate themselves with live content uh, and, and sports being a major part of that. Yeah. Apple has been dabbling with sports content. Lucas, I mean, where are the battle lines going to be drawn? I mean, which streamers are going to be bidding for what? And is that going to be the next wave of big competition? Well, the most aggressive of the streaming services in sports, if you take ESPN Plus out of the equation, because that's really part of the broader ESPN empire, has been Amazon. Amazon has Thursday Night Football coming up in, in a couple of weeks. They have a lot of rights in Europe. They were a big player for both the, the Big Ten and Champions League and just didn't get it. So they've, they've shown the biggest commitment and appetite. Apple has started to, to play around the edges. They have the MLS rights. They're seen as the front runner for NFL Sunday ticket. Netflix hasn't jumped in in a big way yet. They, they offered a pretty, what sounded like kind of a paltry sum for the Formula One rights. They have been reluctant to, to spend big on live sports just yet. You know, we'll see what comes with, with the next big rights negotiations. You have the NBA, NASCAR coming up in a couple of years. Will, if one of, those, uh, one of those leagues or organizations tries to carve out some rights for streaming, that would be another big package to go. But it's, it's worth keeping in mind that, say, with something like the NFL, Amazon is the only major streaming service that has largely exclusive rights. You know, most of the other games are on broadcast TV.